everyone, welcome to the Rebellious Garden. My name is Laura and I'm so glad you're here today. Today, while I was out cutting flowers, I thought it would be a great idea to talk to you about what the winter or the upcoming winter means for the garden and what's gonna happen when we get our first frost in a couple of weeks. So as I just mentioned, I'm out cutting for a bouquet for a anniversary bouquet to be more specific. And I wanted to share with you what's next for the garden as far as when we get our first frost. So it is the middle of October and we are um, on schedule, I say, to get our first frost around the end of the month. We typically have one around Halloween or the first few days of November. So that is just a couple quick weeks away. So I wanted to talk to you what that meant. The garden right now, my yard is very messy, ignore it. The garden right now, is looking a little sad, half dead, not as pretty and joyful as it was in the middle of the summer. So, first of all, blurry, there's a dahlia. So I'll take you around the garden real quick and we'll chat. I'm gonna use my gladiolus tips here as my pointers. So we had a tropical system come through a couple weeks ago and got a little bit of wind out of it. I did not have a few of my beds netted, which I should have. So we had some wind damage, but it wasn't bad. I can still harvest. I just have to be creative with how we use it. But our colossal marigolds are doing really good. Our standard marigolds are still doing good. I use a lot of these in my pumpkin arrangements. A lot of our gladiolus got blown over. I didn't have them netted. That was my fault. I also didn't have the uh, second tier of some of the dahlias tied up and there are a ton of weeds growing in here i have not pulled weeds in so long so don't judge me this is this is real gardening <laughs> um i spend more time cutting flowers and trying to keep bugs off of them than i do pulling weeds but the dahlias are still producing I have quite a few that'll be coming off this week so i'm excited to really start including those in bouquets there's my kiss of sunshine down there. These zinnias right here are eat up with disease, but they're still producing. It's something very common right here in North Carolina and a lot of your southern states with the amount of humidity that we have throughout the season. And because I do tend to crowd my zinnias and plant them really close together, um, they'll keep a lot of moisture on the stem. So we'll get a lot of really good cuts off of them and then they'll start dying from the bottom up. And so I'll pull these and typically plant more, but because we are here at the end of the season, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna let them go until they don't produce anymore. Here goes another Dahlia. All right, so the garden here, the Rebecca, kind of sick looking. It's, that has given me so many stems, I can't even guesstimate how many stems that Rebecca has given me, but all the Rebecca in the garden has given me a ton of stems. So now that it's starting to show the disease and the sickness, I'll be pulling it and that way I can let the, the soil rest. I have amaranth and celosia planted all throughout. My yarrow uh, is not flowering anymore. However, I still use the leaves and stuff for some accents in my bouquets. So, use all parts of the plant best I can. More amaranth and celosia, random gumfrina. More gladiolus. These are in a little bit better shape because they're sheltered by our humongous fig tree. So they didn't get quite as much wind damage, though there is still some. I'm gonna uh, stake these a little bit better or net them next year. So I'm gonna circle back around this way more of our uh, Rebecca. These actually had a really bad aphid infestation and I just could not get rid of them like I typically can. So I just let them be. Actually, you can see some on this stem over here. Do -do -do. Yeah. Let's see if I can get it to focus. I don't want to focus. You see those little specks on the stem though? That's, um, those are aphids. So I've just kind of given up on these. They're done for the season. So I'm gonna let them reseed naturally and 
pull the rest of the plants and call it good. Some more slosha amaranth pl uh, planted in here. This was my last little planting, some extras I had left over, so I stuck them in here. Some of my decorative grasses, they're grown, they're grown, goodness, they're gone. Volunteer tomato. Anytime I have a volunteer plant come up, if it is not like causing an issue with any other plants that are growing, I'm gonna leave it there. So a volunteer tomato came up. It sustained some wind damage as well. That's why it's like bent over, but I'm gonna uh, stake it back up because it'll keep producing tomatoes up until we get a frost and then the frost will kill it. Right before we get a frost, I come and pick all the green tomatoes off, take them inside and they'll turn red inside. So nothing gets lost. Our lovely canopy of cucumbers is no more. <laughs> I need to get here and pull these vines off. So, yeah, other view of the tomato. Let's get around this thing. So, I usually have stuff a little bit more organized, but I had like little random plants here and there that didn't get sold at the farmer's market or like they were delayed in the seeding process. So, like all the other seeds had sprouted in my grow trays and I had some blocks that didn't sprout and then just randomly one day, several weeks behind the other ones, they decided to sprout. So these are kind of my oddballs coming in here. More amaranth, random Cosmo. <laughs> More marigolds. That's where I had my teddy bear sunflowers, but you can tell it's just nothing but stalks because they've produced and done what they needed to do. This bed has just, it's just gone to the dogs here. Ton of marigold, that's one plant, literally one plant. The weeds have taken over this bed. I still have some lysianthus, but the weeds have taken over. Lysianthus don't like weeds, so they're not producing very well. They were producing really short stems. Matter of fact, there's one right there. So really short stems, so I've been using them in my pumpkin arrangements. So once again, end of the season, it's too late to plant anything new. So I'm just letting the plants stay and I'll get whatever I can off of them. Random zinnias, the rebellious dahlia. She's got some buds on her still. That one's done. She still has buds on her. Another cucumber vine I need to take out. Rebecca that needs to get pulled. Lysianthus and glads that are pretty much done. My green beans I picked and I'm letting some dry. That way we can harvest them later. This was some of my last round of zinnias. I've been able to get focused here. I've been able to start harvesting off of these. So that's pretty awesome. Cantaloupe that never grew. <laughs> I still have a cucumber plant going right here. I need to pick this guy. I don't like them to get much bigger than that. It's starting to taste weird, but she's still producing. This was a bed. This is where my lemon basil was. It's all died, seeded. So I'll have lots of baby basil plants here, but it's full of weeds now. I need to get in here and pull them. More zinnias. So, that zinnia got knocked over. I just left it because the zinnias are gonna turn and start growing towards the sun. So now they're growing upright. So I've just left it there. And anytime we mow, I just pick it up so we can mow around it. For a little bee friend. Hello friend. <laughs> Alrighty, let me take you down to the big garden. See if I can get it to zoom in. black cat that hangs around our neighborhood. There's a lot of stray cats around here. So this one's constantly like laying on the trampoline. So we call them Binks. Very skittish. Okie dokie. Coming up to the big garden. She's holding on. So she's starting to show her age a little bit. Gumfrina is about done. I've been cutting and using a lot of cannon bouquets, drying it. Straw flowers got blown over during the storm. 
I'm leaving them. Gonna harvest them the best I can. But we have amaranth and celosia again, the yarrow. I have a few that are flowering, not much. Still using the greenery. Everything's just kind of like, it's done. <laughs> but my dahlias are still producing, so I can't complain. Cosmos are doing really well over here. Let me step through this area. It's so funny when people see me do this and they're like, what are you doing? So I have the two tea posts right here. This is my the garden that's at my neighbor's house. I have two tea posts right here to help with the netting. And before I walk through them, I take flowers and I go, shaw, shaw, because there's always spider webs. <laughs> Don't like spiders. Okay, so Cosmos, these are doing really well. This is my either second or third planting. I can't remember. So these guys are doing really well. I've learned this year Cosmos more so what I do and do not want to plant for next year as far as the variety. But they're doing really well. Sorry, that's kind of blurry. I'm not going to go much further. Um, zinnias. Ton of zinnias. These are the first plantings of zinnias that I did in this garden. And they're still producing like crazy. They really are. I'm very happy with them. Basil in the back corner over there. More Cosmos. Flamingo Feather. Celosia. Doing good. The Tangerine Gem Marigolds died. But that's okay. That's to be expected. Still have some alive. More little seed dahlias I planted. Just to see what they would do. This is where some flowers were. You see where I still have been cutting. I'm gonna pull those stalks out. Amaranth is taken off. My last planting of it. Maybe I'll get some out before we get a frost. Volunteer zinnia. Look at this thing. That is one zinnia plant from there to there. One zinnia plant. That is a volunteer. That is why if I have volunteer plants come up in my garden, if they're not messing with anything else, I leave them. Because the DNA in those seeds are programmed for our weather and our environment. So you see how much bigger that plant is versus a single plant over here. You've got like maybe five branches, whereas this has a dozen or more branches. And I've been cutting off this thing all season long. It's huge. These were my branch and sunflowers. A lot of people love these sunflowers that I've been putting in my pumpkin arrangements. This is where they come from. People don't believe me when I say I grow them. There they are. Proof. <laughs> but I have different, different types, different colors. This one is a little far gone. These plants are, are on their way out. So I'm gonna harvest what I can off of them and then give them a much needed rest. But that's where these guys come from beautiful but yeah the other side of the zinnias cut it back out ouch without stepping on a plant which i did i only stepped on a dahlia yeah. <laughs> but yeah there's the big garden all right i'm gonna try to talk and harvest at the same time so what is going to happen when uh we get our first frost well pretty much everything that you see here is going to die what happens when it frosts? The water and stuff that are in the plant's leaves freezes and expands and bursts the cell, therefore killing the plant. Uh, sometimes with like dahlias in particular, if you have like a really light frost and it's just a bud, if you cover it up, the bud might survive a very, very light frost, but like literally just a quick kiss of it. Um, I had that happen last year so I was able to get a couple more dahlias off, but um, most of the other stuff is gonna die. Basil definitely dies. Basil does not like cold weather at all. Um, I don't really think I have anything out here that'll really, really survive. Sunflowers, surprisingly enough, sunflowers have a better cold tolerance than a lot of flowers do, and people don't realize that. That's why when I had sunflowers on Mother's Day, people were surprised. I kept them under frost fabric, so the nights that it did get below freezing, it was 
okay they were still growing but that's how I'm able to plant them so early but everything in here is gonna die so what does that mean for my business well it means that not only the garden itself but I get a much needed break am I going to spend the next few months doing nothing and sitting on my butt absolutely not because I have a full-time job but no there's still tons to be done so it's the middle of October and I'm already growing the flowers for next year you saw that in the seed starting video I'm already growing flowers for next year I have tons of flowers in my house right now I say tons of flowers seedlings for the flowers growing so um, those will be taken care of I'll probably plant them out this upcoming week I'll plant them out into the garden I'll get things pulled I'll get them planted out and I'll go ahead and have it set up for the frost fabric to be put over the beds that way they can grow without issue over the winter months I'm gonna come around to the other side so with the frost fabric you can't plant just any type of flower underneath the frost fabric um, it has to be flowers that like cooler weather so it's actually a cool flowers method which I believe I talked about in the video um, like snapdragons yarrow fever few things like that they love cooler temperatures and so um, what they do is they don't actually produce the flowers over the winter but the little um, seedlings they'll grow a little bit but for the most part it'll just be um, roots I'm coming back around the other way <laughs> so it'll just grow roots the whole time and the great thing about the cool flowers method is you are growing those roots so the plant is focusing its energy on growing roots not leaves and so the time in the spring when the temperatures start to warm up just a little bit the plants go oh it's time to wake up and then they have this nice strong root base and so then they can start growing and producing that way we have flowers earlier and they'll be stronger plants as well so that's what we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks the seedlings in the house are going to come out to the garden after I pull a lot of that dead stuff that you saw earlier, I'm going to put some compost in that soil and turn it over, let it rest for a little bit, and then I'll plant those seedlings out there and I'll cover them with that frost fabric. Probably won't cover them just yet. I'll wait until we actually have a frost warning. Then I'll cover them. And that way, the leaves themselves won't get damaged by the frost, but um, the roots will be cool enough, but also warm enough to grow. Uh, the plant over the winter i did that last year had great success loved it swore i'd do it again every year thereafter um so once everything dies off as well i'll come out here this whole garden area rest over the winter months i'm actually going to plant mustard out here that way it's like this um helps because i have the uh, root knot nematodes in this garden and so mustard actually has like some sort of, I can't explain it very well, but has some sort of like chemical in it that once the plant grows and then you chop it up and turn over the soil, it, the, the nematodes don't like it. So <laughs> from my less than technical explanation. So that's what will happen here in the big garden. My cool flowers will be in the backyard garden uh, by the house. Uh, back there, I'll also plant out our tulips. I have, Lord knows how many tulips. I lost count. Yeah, I lost count. I just kind of quit counting. Um, so we'll actually be doing a, a video soon of me opening all of those to get a refresher of everything I ordered. Um, I'll also plant out our anemones and our uh, ranunculus. So all of those will go over there at the house as well this bed will rest other than it'll have mustard we'll turn it over with some compost and this whole garden over here will rest over the winter in the spring I'll bring out silage tarp throw over top of it kill any grass that grows because most of the time our winters are semi mild here in eastern North Carolina so grass will continue to grow in this area 
and I'll bring out silage tarps to kill off the grass. We'll till it up because we do till this bed and uh, we'll till it up and then we'll start planting. Probably first thing we plant out over here will be sunflowers and yarrow. But yeah, that's what our plans are for the next few weeks and months. Just so you know, you're hanging out on a sunflower branch. So what does the garden and the frost killing everything off mean as far as the business is concerned? I said a while ago that I won't be sitting around all winter long. Hang on. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I'm working hard to uh, get those seedlings, keep them alive. So they'll be ready to come out to the garden. And then, um, as far as the business, there won't be a lot. Uh, other than like gift certificates, I'll have gift certificates available for people to purchase for the 2023 season. Um, I'll also be selling my bouquet subscriptions during that time for next year, which is where you have like a guaranteed bouquet every week for a set number of weeks. I'll be doing that during that time. I'll be offering those up close to Christmas because that would make like a really awesome Christmas gift. Just telling you. Hint, hint. Um, I have some like non non perishable no I don't know uh I don't know what exactly my kids are outside playing um I have some items that aren't like perishable flower items like I have like ornaments magnets and wreaths that I've made using flowers that I've dried and I have a few other things up my sleeve that I'm going to make and have available for sale at Christmas Another thing I do are the uh, beeswax wraps. They're pretty awesome. So I'll have those available for like sale for Christmas. But other than that, there's really not much over the winter season that um, will be available for purchase. Obviously no fresh bouquets, which is fine because the garden needs to rest just like I do. Uh, we need to let the land rest and I need to rest as well. So uh, we'll be doing that. I'll be spending a lot of the winter prepping for the spring but also resting a little bit. But that's pretty much what's gonna happen. So whenever we get our first frost, that'll be the end of flowers, fresh flowers. Um, I still have some dried stuff available. And then um, probably depending upon how mild our winter is, which I think the Almanac is pre pre uh, predicting us to have a, a cooler than cooler than usual winter like our winters the past few years have been really mild but we're supposed to have a cooler than usual winter which is fine because it's actually really good for the tulips so we'll depending upon how the winter months do they will uh, what am I trying to say <laughs> depending upon how the winter months go as far as temperature and stuff like that and then how quickly we warm up in the spring then the tulips will come in and daffodils usually starting around beginning to the middle of arch i'm going to try something this year i'm going to try to force some of them so almost creating like a greenhouse effect over top of them to see if i can force some of those bulbs i'm just doing it doing it as an experiment this year because i would love to be able to offer some of those fresh tulips and stuff and anemones and ranunculus as close to valentine's day as possible if not on valentine's day that would be really cool so I'm gonna experiment with that, but the majority of them, um, tulips, daffodils, and then ranunculus and anemones will be ready starting probably mid-March through the middle of April. That's kind of the time frame of them. And then from there, the cool flowers will be coming in. And then after that, then we'll be back into the summer flowers and then everything starts all over. And before we know it, we'll be back here again next year. But that's kind of how the winter works around here spring and summer so you know what to expect so once we get our first frost i won't have flowers i won't be able to make bouquets but that's okay because that's what's so great about local flowers is you miss them while they're gone and that makes them that much sweeter whenever you can have them again in the spring and summer flowers <laughs> so 
that's kind of the down low on what's going to happen here in the next few weeks to next few months. Will I stop posting content on social media? Absolutely not. I like to keep you guys updated on what we're doing because there's always work to be done. And that way I think it builds a little bit of excitement in everyone. It sure does me. And I'll keep filming YouTube videos, kind of keeping you abreast of what's going on when I'm planting out the tulips and the anemones and the ranunculus. When I'm transplanting the seedlings out to the garden, I'll definitely try my best to remember to film all that. That way I can share it with you. So with that, I bid you farewell. I'm gonna go inside and make a beautiful bouquet for an anniversary. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you come back to see me again and I hope you have a blessed day.